Okay, so in the previous lesson, we, we looked at uh, how to use PBR textures to achieve uh, those details there. But uh, let's assume you don't have any PBR textures, but uh, you still want to control uh, the roughness with an image texture you have. So let's, um, so, 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 so we're going to add a sole a texture for this, wooden texture for this. Let's also assign this to that. It's using the same textures. And uh, let's say we have this image. We have only one image, and it's what we want. Uh, so you maybe you have PBR textures, but uh, you have seen a texture you want to use. Maybe you want to use this one here for the soil. You like it, but uh, you don't have a uh, corresponding uh, roughness, uh, normal map, bump map textures at fo to use in the as PBR for, for the PBR look you're going for. And uh, you just want to use these exact, exact textures. So let's see how we can fake uh, the same effect to achieve uh, the, that realistic PBR look that uh, everyone is going for nowadays. So <coughs> uh, first of all, let's uh, go to UV editor, the UV editor. And uh, good thing is that uh, these, these are already selected. So let's select the entire soul or you can go to the materials and select everything uh, select everything that is connected that is assigned to that material now we need to rotate uh, these or what you could do what you could do is uh, go to the object properties let me make sure this is recording yeah uh, go to the object properties and uh, under uv maps you can see we already have this uv map but you can create a new uv map and uh, we can, I think this is the same. Let's see. So, can I go to this? Go back and select this. And uh, unwrap this again. Uh, we separate with this, what? Let me make sure I have this selected. Because I want to rotate this UV uh, without without affecting the first UV map, so we can rotate this 90 degrees. Or maybe even scale it. Like that. So maybe you are happy with uh, how they look there. Let's get this thing here. Uh, I want this detail here to be around this here. So let's select this part. I'm not sure why it's selecting like that. I only want to select this. Okay. Oh, I think because we have these other UVs, uh, they're also getting selected. So let's turn off this and then select this. So let's go to texture. Uh, because I want to move uh, this so that we can see that detail. this this side yeah I think that's good enough and uh, the good thing th uh, is that uh, because we have two UVs here you see uh, we, we made edits to this second one but uh, we still have this first UV intact you can see everything is still in place but uh, when we switch to this one you see uh, yeah that's what we edited 
so we can go back to sharing and now what you can do is uh, add a color ramp color ramp, uh, sorry vector color ramp then connect the color to this and we can use that for the roughness and uh, if we preview only this roughness control shift and then click you can see how uh, this looks so we have t converted it into a black and white uh, image uh, because the roughness uses uh, a black and white color color map color map to tell blender where the uh, reflections where the smooth reflections should be and the rough reflections should be uh, so we can use these gradients to control how much roughness we want so the darker the darker spots you see will have a uh, sharp reflections and uh, while the white parts will have a uh, dark reflection so if we go back bring this back to the roughness you can see we have it seems like we still I don't know if the rough parts you can if you can see the rough parts but uh, they are there you can see around there uh, so because we have a lot of reflections uh, white reflections they are over over I don't know overlapping uh, the rough reflection so we can invert this node here and you can see what we have the and let's first invert it there we don't want uh, these reflections to be that sharp or pronounced as much as that because this is what it shouldn't be unless it's vanished and uh, uh, that's not the look we are going for so we can reduce that sharpness by changing this black uh, node into somewhat gray grayish, grayish col gray color so that we reduce uh, the roughness like that or maybe even invert this let's say uh, we can bring this back let's first preview this again so we can see we have a lot of white areas so we can uh, reduce that by bringing back the black areas a bit so so that we still have some reflective areas so if we preview this you can see that's what we get see i think that's better think that's the look we are going for maybe for the white parts we also don't want them to be fully rough so we can reduce it just a notch maybe also the black areas shouldn't be that reflective I think that's good enough so if you want this shoe to be darker uh, because right now it's a bit uh, too woody so we can add a color ramp and then add either a hue and saturation so you can reduce the saturation in this uh, but that's that doesn't give us a good look so we can add an rgb color color node a curves node so rgb color uh, rgb curves and uh, crush the black areas so that is a bit darker maybe we can reduce the highlights a bit more maybe we still need this and then we can reduce the amount of red maybe bring up the blue so this is just doing some color stuff it's very standard And because when you add such contrast, you're, you're also somehow boosting uh, the, satul the saturation in the, in the image. So we can add a hue and saturation, then reduce the saturation to about 0.3 maybe. That's too much. 0.6. Maybe you can bring this uh, 
kind of look at that without the, actually this looks even better without any colors, color map. So what we can do is maybe, let's see if we use this. We still have the refract, the refraction map, which is giving us that cool effect. Maybe we can reduce some of the refresh refreshions there to make it more rough. Now we can also use the same map for the normal map. And uh, because this is a color node, we can uh, connect it directly to the normal map. So we can use a vector bump map, connect the color map to the height, and then this normal to the normal. So it will convert this into a normal map. And now we can reduce the strength to about 0.2. That's still too much, 0 0.01. Let's say point 0.1, still too much, point zero 0.09, zero 0.06. It's still a bit too much, let's say point zero 0.04. I think that's still not, still a lot. Yeah, something like that. And uh, maybe we can give this some bit of color so we can add a mix color node. Mix color node. Connect, bring the color. And just to preview what is what we're doing here, we can just add a uh, viewer node. So you just control shift and then click on the node. And uh, let's give this a full color. Maybe drop this down. So this is what we had before. And uh, we can use maybe a dark color here. And I uh, use this blending mode, use blending modes to change the color a bit, maybe. Let's make sure, let's use a darker purple here. Let's try uh, linear, that's too much. Let's try multiply. So you can play around with what you have. Let's try multiply and then give this again. You can use this in the base color. You can see the color is still there so we can increase it a bit. You can even change, give it a stellarized look if you want. Yeah, so you can see. Yeah, that's an easier way to achieve a PBR a PBR look without even having the PBR textures. So we can also ha have this as the specularity and see how that affects it. I think it's good enough. What else can we use? Let's see if we add a clear coat. Uh, this is like adding that finish uh, touch on there. But again, we can maybe use the same color map for that. I don't think we need the clear, co the clear coat for this. So. So that's more like a wooden sole. So if you don't want the wooden sole, just leave, remove the base color. <coughs> and uh, you have uh, the rubber sole. I think it looks good. So again, you can also change the color here for this. <coughs> so remember we used a PBR texture for this, uh, but uh, if we want to, ch and the PBR color map was black. So if we want to change the color here, <coughs> this is the color map. So let's preview it. Uh, this is the ambient occlusion. The color map is this here. This here. So if we want to change it, uh, maybe we can add a mix color node right after we mix, we mix the ambient occlusion. So if you didn't see this tutorial, it's in my videos, so you can go back and view that. So let's add 
mix RGB between uh, this and that. So then we can change the blending mode to multiply, increase the factor, and then connect this, use this as the base color now. You can see it has that kind of purplish uh, feel to it. You can give it any color. And uh, if you want uh, that color to be more pronounced, you can uh, make it more lighter. And if you want it to be settled, you just make it more darker. You can also experiment with different uh, color blending modes. And see what works uh, for you. So because uh, the way I made this model is that uh, uh, this entire mesh has a solidify modifier and uh, a solid mod sorry, a solidify modifier uh, has uh, this material index so that you can set. So the solid modifier modifier just gives thickness uh, to the mesh and uh, it can, you can set uh, <coughs> a different color for the extruded or this the thickness uh, t you can set the thickness to have a different color and uh, you can see it has um, the material that has a material index of two and uh, so if we go to this here to the object materials so this is the material that is going that is applied uh, to the solidify modifier uh, but uh, if we add another material now that material gets to be applied uh, to that uh, object. And uh, if you have another texture, so texture, image, image texture, uh, let's go to textures, find something interesting like, uh, I don't know, uh, this pattern. I love, let's just pick this here. We can use that as the base color for the inside, like that. Or maybe choose a more colorful image like this. Nah. Or you can use a black and white map like this. But uh, instead of feeding it directly to the color map, you can add a color mix RGB and use this as the factor to mix uh, these two colors. So one can be maybe a pink like that and uh, you can use a different one. Maybe, you know, let's invert this. So this is uh, white and this is more pink. So this is white is pinkish something like that now these patterns are too big so you can add uh, the mapping node using control T control control T I then increase the scale to about five five and if you want you can rotate this map let's say 60 degrees 60 degrees yeah and you have your shoe